Motorhead is not just a band, it's an institution, you know? Yeah. These guys are so fucking crazy <laughs> that I've never seen anything like it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cassius Morris Show. Thanks for tuning in to episode 205 of the podcast. Today, we're joined by a special guest calling in from Sweden. Mickey D is a rock and metal drummer hailing out of Europe who began his career in the likes of King Diamond and Don Dokken. As he progressed into the American music scene, he became one of the most sought after drummers in the genre, eventually joining Motorhead in 1992. Why do they not believe? Why do Mickey was a pivotal part of Motorhead until 2015 when the group ended with Lemmy Kilmister's sudden passing. In 2016, Mickey was hired on as drummer of the Scorpions and has been their full-time percussionist ever since. Mickey is one hell of a guy. I gotta say, as a fellow drummer, it's been quite a while since I've talked to one. Definitely nowhere near the league of Mickey, of course, but nonetheless, as someone who definitely enjoys the craft and the mechanics of it, it's always cool to talk shop with a drummer, even for a couple minutes. This episode touches on a lot of things. We talk about all of the different groups that Mickey's been in. It's not just focused on one group. It's not just Motorhead-centered. We really do a whole career retrospective with him. Not only that, but looking forward at what he's going to do. There's a lot of information about Scorpions, maybe some rumors about an upcoming record that I might start right now. I don't know. You're going to have to tune in to the rest of this to find out. But if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button wherever you're tuning into this now, be it YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio. Hit that subscribe button and leave a review or comment. Definitely want to know what you guys think of the content I've been putting out. So without further ado, let's get into my exclusive podcast with Mickey D. You're notorious for the sonar drum playing. I, I would assume you're still playing sonar all the way, right? Oh, yes. Definitely. Um, I'm wondering about the sonar. Was that from the start for you or did you start on a different type of kit? No. Uh, yeah, my first actual kit was a sonar kit. 1963. Nice. It's uh, down here in my studio now again, actually. Oh, you still have I it. I sold it. I No, I, I, I sold it when I was probably about 10, 12, hmm. 10 years old. Old, and uh, I haven't seen it until three years ago. Wow. When uh, a television production actually uh, found a kit for me and I bought it back. So That's amazing. Was it like some sort of pawn show or something like that where they go find stuff in a unit? No, no, no. It was a, uh, it was a TV show. Different celebrities go back to when they were 12 years old which was 1975 for me. Mm -hmm. And then me and my family lived in this house and cars and food and clothing. Everything was 1975 again. Wow. Four days. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. Amazing. It was like a blast from the past. Yeah, yeah. Toys and everything I did as a kid, you know, or a 12-year-old. So, And then they found this drum kit for me. So it was amazing. That is amazing. Wow. I mean, in, Big in Swedish tobacco. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. Hey, you got to enjoy, right? So, oh, yeah. I mean, and I know it's a, it's so long ago and, and you've probably touched on it, but in terms of, of teaching yourself, were, were you a lessons guy or were you just uh, banging on the drums and I, I'll eventually figure it out? Yeah, pretty much. That's how much. you did it. That's what it was. Um, I, I, uh, you know, when you at that age, uh, well, actually, it started when I was seven, when I, when I saw Deep Purple, <clears throat> 1971, then, uh, first time. And, and uh, that was so impressive in a way, you know, that, that it blew me away. Of course, I, I like Deep Purple uh, from the start, but when I actually saw the show, it, that that was something I'd like to see on that stage, you know. And, yeah. Uh, 
so but but why I said that was I, I didn't see myself as a musician to occupation, if you will. Mm. More more I, I was gonna be an athlete. That's what I was gonna do, you know. Really? I played hockey, I skied, I, I did karate, I did did gymnastics. I, I mean uh that was what I saw myself and, and music was was a hobby in a way for many, many, many years to come, you know. Wow. So sitting banging away on the drums, it was just very natural and it was a hobby experience in a way, you know. I came mm. home from school and I banged away a little bit on my drums and, and then I went to to uh yeah, some hockey practice or or skiing or whatever, you know, it, that but that's the way it was. So I'm I'm self taught, yeah. Hmm. And so as a kid, you were always doing things to fill your time that were productive and creative. You didn't, it doesn't sound like you had much time to just be hanging out, you know, getting up to no good, so to speak. No, no, I was, I was out the door early morning and I, you know, the 24 hours a day was not enough. Really to, <laughs> right. To you cover. needed more. <laughs> no, but you know, I was a very active kid. I, I, I had a fantastic childhood, you know, and. We we were always outdoor. We were fishing and we were in the woods and, and you know, where I grew up, it was it's in the city of Gothenburg, but it's more mm -hmm. like a suburb type of area. And uh we had fantastic green green uh, you know, it was woods and, and big uh big lawns. We could play baseball and football and, and you know in the winters, we were skiing and, and playing hockey and go skating. And I mean, we were out all the time, you know? Yeah, that and was a big part of it. That, yes, absolutely. I, I was, you know, that I had to go home and eat was, was a drag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drink some water. Like, come on, why do I got to do this? Uh, you know, it's... I have to get home and, and eat dinner and then bam, you were back out <laughs> in the, whatever you were doing. So it was, it, I, I think that, that was great, you know. It was fantastic. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about that when a person gets that growing up, because, you know, it sounds quite similar to Canada, you know, big lawns, yeah. lots of emphasis on hockey, being outdoors. Um, and, you know, I've heard you mention that carrying that through your life has sort of helped you stay on track throughout the music business. I mean, never dabbling with drugs, never doing uh, all those pitfalls, and you would you would fill it still with your productive hobbies, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I play hockey three times a week now during the winter. Nice. I play. I play with uh, uh, the academy, Gothenburg Academy team, mm. and uh, and then I play with uh, the sponsor guys on Friday. Sometimes uh, I, I haven't done that for a little bit now, but I, I like to get back into it. They sponsor our major team here in in Gothenburg, Frölunda, which is a very good team. You know. Nice. Or, uh, so, um, yeah, and you know, I just, I just try to to keep it up. I mean, this is what I like to do, and yeah. be outside more than inside. You know, it's it's just the way I always been, and you know, fuck drugs and all that, and, and sports and outdoor activities keep my head straight. You know, yeah, that fresh air it, it'll do it something really restorative. Yeah, it's very true. But I am a party. I, I love to party. Don't get me wrong. Well, yeah, you got to have that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I love to go party and hang out as well. But, you know, I, I combinating the, the the party with sports and, you know, music life and, and family life and then, you know, your activities, it's it's great, you know. Yeah, definitely. As long as you moments. have the balance. <laughs> exactly. You pick, pick your moments. Pick your moments. Yeah. yeah, that's the important thing to do. I wonder, you know, just based on sort of the Motorhead legacy and sort of the origins of the Motorhead name, is is it is there a sort of a misconception sometimes about you that you do use drugs or that you're into that? Or, and do you have to correct that a lot? Yeah. 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 No, I, no, I can't say that I have to deal with that okay. at all, actually, these days. But, you know, when I first joined Motorhead, uh, the 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 first thing Lemmy said the day I see you do drugs make you fucking fired. <laughs> right, <laughs> pretty clear that. terms. <laughs> I love it. He he could not understand people 
starting to do drugs, you know. He said they all know what where where this is gonna end. Yeah. But they they did experiment in the sixties and you know, and he was uh from a different world kinda than what I was. He wanted me the way I was, you know, and, and mm. uh and then I guess in the beginning a lot of fans that did not know me maybe from King Diamond and so forth, they they thought I was, you know, some hair dude from, you know, some West Coast pop band or something, you know, <laughs> just but but most people knew me from King Diamond, so there was no problem. I got accepted fairly quick, which was okay. great, you know. Well, because you came in swinging with, you know, some impeccable drums, you know, I mean, it, and I, I heard you sort of mention that you, you really felt like you had to prove yourself at that time. Yes, because I was pretty fed up with the, with the diamond days. Not that I played that, that we played that long, but it was very, those days, fairly com- complex music, you know, and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and we had great success especially in us and canada i mean it was crazy Mm -hmm. you know yeah early 80s and mid 80s out and uh i just felt i think it was when i joined uh dawn after king diamond into dock and i realized that i i had so much stress in my drumming you know i i couldn't sit Mm. and rock out and my meter wasn't the best and i i did fills and backbeats all over the place and i just wanted to play get back to the basic stuff again you know yeah so i felt i felt very narrow as a drummer totally a lot of people still they go oh man that's the best shit you've done yeah but you know it, it was it was great those days when we uh when when we did it and and i'm so happy that the few bands that i've been with that they had come in the right order, if you will. Yes. Uh, D- King Diamond was great. I was a young team, you know, and, and when you're a super young drummer or musician, you want to be the best and the technical shit's more important than than anything else. Hmm. Uh, so that was perfect. And I developed my style. So right. I'm I'm really grateful for the years we did with with uh, with King, and um, and we had so much fun. That was the first picnic, if you will, you know, and mm. and with the success that we had, it was just amazing. So, yeah. But after that, I felt that I wow, I'm I'm just I'm very stressed in my drumming, you know. Well, yeah, that makes and, sense. Uh, so many arrangements, yeah. so many changes in the songs. Yeah, I couldn't sit very many bars without, you know, doing something. And and quite a lot of stuff that I played sounded boring to me because I was more used to this uh, very forward role in a band like King Diamond where 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 I had a, a big role and I created backbeats and tempo changes and, and kind of more technical drum fills and stuff. Suddenly I was just basically sitting rocking out. And, and yeah. uh, that was very hard for me at the beginning. And and when I finally joined Motorhead, it was the perfect timing for it because I turned down Motorhead three, three serious times, you know, and right. from 1986, I believe. So, um, I was happy that that I did, you know, turn it down. So I, I would have been eating up for breakfast otherwise. I, I had hmm. to earn my stripes before I joined that band. In what sense exactly? Is it because of the rigorous tour life? Is it because of the where you ended up musically? No, more. We toured with Motorhead with King Diamond. Right. We opened up for Motorhead, and that's when I got to to know the guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh, we became really, really good friends. We had a fantastic European tour, so much fun, and I learned so much. But I also realized that Motorhead is not just a band; it's an institution. You know, yeah, a lifestyle. These guys are, yeah, these guys are so 
fucking crazy <laughs> that I've never seen anything like it. And <laughs> I consider myself a very young uh, rookie at the time, in a way, you know, that mm. I, I felt I, I don't belong mm. in that category yet. You know, I need to earn my stripes. I need to be touring, getting some routine and maybe I can fit into a band like this because if I join a band, I like to make a difference. You know, I like right. to contribute and and to do something. And with King Diamond, I did. We we did fantastic music and we had great success. And I felt that I I was a big part of the building of of King Diamond. Oh, 100%. And when I later joined, yeah, when I later joined Doc, and I felt very much a part of that as well we 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 did a great record and we had a fantastic 12 month non-stop tour yeah and uh and we did canada as well uh and uh i never really jumped between bands or or opportunities because of money or fame you know right where i felt comfortable that's where i stayed and uh but when i later the doc can think kind of fell apart for several reasons uh, not because of of that we didn't like each other or or have different opinions it was just that john Oren was going to do his solo record billy white moved back to texas he wanted to do uh his own ba old band again the watchtower okay uh, peter baltes was gonna reunite with with the uh, accept mm. So everybody was just uh, veering uh, apart. Yeah, it kind of just fell apart because we 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 were writing songs for a second record, and uh, they didn't like it at Geffen Records. They hmm. they didn't like the album. We worked very hard on it, and uh, because don't forget, it was grunge times. Oh, that was the grunge days. And the label people—they're always going for the current trend, not thinking outside yeah, of the box. They, yeah. Exactly. We we were not a grunge band with with Doc. We were a rock pop band, you know. Totally. West Coast California West Coast rock band, and uh, and uh, the music we wrote was really good. Yes, and it was. They didn't like it, and that was a big disappointment for all of us. So I remember Don telling me, he said, "Look, you know, everybody's kind of leaving the ship here, Mickey, and." Uh, I don't blame you if you do as well. You know, I said, no, I'm, I hang with you. I, I did do some shows with World War Three. Mm -hmm. I stepped into that band instead of Vinnie Apice, uh to help them get re-signed uh, after losing a record deal. But then Lemmy called and, and I felt this is the right moment. You know, this is... Uh, yeah. I feel ready for these fucking crazy nuts. You know? <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, though, you know, but hearing about it, because you knew that you could do it in a matter of time, but you just felt that in the initial offers, it wasn't right. I mean, that takes a lot of sort of insight about yourself. Yeah, you have to, you have to, uh, I wouldn't say analyze yourself, but be honest to yourself. I mean, mm. it's easy to get blinded and, and go, Oh my God! You know, uh, uh, a band like Motorhead is wants me, and 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 just jump into it. Right. But I guarantee you, if I did the earlier years, I would have been eaten up for breakfast. I don't think I would have been accepted in the band and by the fans. I don't think I would have been able to tribute to the band. I was, I was not ready for that band. Hmm. But again, after playing with Don a couple of years. And playing more of the softer style, if you will, I felt, man, I do belong in, in the heavy division, you know, and oh, yeah. had, could not have come at a better time for me. So, uh, and as soon as we uh, start working together, it all clicked immediately. And we wrote that song, I mean, album Bastards, and it's a phenomenal record, I think. One of the better ones we, we did. And everyone... I saw a big, I saw a lot of trouble with, with Motorhead when I joined them because they were, it was quite chaotic, if you will. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Uh, it was cha chaotic because you had Versal, Phil and Lemmy 
three members that did not want to deal with the business whatsoever. Mm. They they just wanted to play rock and roll and party. And and uh, I stepped into the band and I took that role immediately together with our manager. And I had the same role with King Diamond and pretty much the same role with Dawkins. Interesting. Okay. Uh, some kind of middleman. You know, the band came to me. I went to the business. Business came to me. I went to the band. <laughs> and and I always I always enjoyed being a, uh, involved in things. So, you know, I did not, of course, have all the trust as I should have uh, immediately from the guys. But, you know, you had to prove yourself and make the right decisions and 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 they thought it was was great that i i was the bumper if you will right of course we all decided stuff together yeah but i took the first hits i guess my manager can call and and say hey listen mickey you got to go to the boys we need a decision on this and and i can't get a single word out of the band you know Mm -hmm. and uh, because they were just uh, you know maybe writing or maybe partying or maybe both you know no, they just were not interested in it. They they thought the business was a blood sucking industry, you know, that mm. just wanted to take advantage of them. And and they were right because up till that moment it was chaos. In in they they got they got taken really hard in in so many ways, you know, by the labels, the industry, yeah, yeah, labels and managements and people took advantage of them and and. Uh, I don't say they were stupid in any shape or form, but they were just not enough involved in in, in a lot of the details going on. I'd say. So yeah. when we had a uh, when we got Todd Singerman as a manager, and he stayed on till the end, and he still is the best guy ever uh, that I ever met in this industry when it comes to honesty and hard work and you know hmm. he still uh, takes care of all the the motorhead estate if you will yeah um everything has to go through todd and and that's great and and we all love todd and, and lemmy had fully trusted him you know so me and todd kind of took over that part if you will you know right it was how is that for you for lemmy no, it's great. It was yeah. fantastic. That's what I wanted to be, and and let me. I, I saw with Lemmy a, a big relief, if you will. You know, oh, I don't want to fucking talk about this shit. It's always <laughs> about money. It's always about this. I go, Lem, we got to talk about it. Well, you fucking take care of it, and mm. and and I did. You know, and uh, he took care of a lot of other things that I was not good at. You know. Okay. Right. So, Everybody had their roles. Exactly, and and Phil was a was a clown of the of the class, you know. So, <laughs> it, like Lemmy said, he's such a mess, but I don't want him any other way, you know. Right, he's our Phil. He's our um, mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Is it true that Phil likes hip hop? So, I don't know. Yeah, a little bit, I guess. Phil is very wide. Yes. He likes all kinds of music. He has no problem with anything that i know of so he's he's a musical genius i have to say mm. you know it's been a pleasure playing with him and we still talk all the time me and flippy and uh and uh i wish him all the best with his band uh bastard sons you know so uh no he he's 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 uh actually a musical genius i have to say and uh and uh, unfortunately, Versal kind of stepped out a little too early, I'd say. He, he lost interest in touring, and I blame his wife more than, uh, more than him for it because he was happy with us, and he was miserable after he talked to her, you know. And then mm. She was the boss kind, kind of, of wife. <laughs> yeah, she was a, a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's another way to say it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like. I mean, she influenced him to really not like touring or being in the music business. So, wow. unfortunately, he was uh, such a fantastic man, you know, and so fun. And 
Oh man, I have so many good memories with Bursal and it feels like a lifetime since he actually left the band and then later died, you know. Uh, he, he came and played with us every time we were in London and it was a pleasure seeing Bursal every time. And I know he regretted it big time, you know. Yeah, wow. That's, that's really sad, sad though. For, yeah, it was sad. But we did great as a three piece and we were happy where we were so unfortunately Versal never came back into the band but yeah well you can't live everybody's life you know he made a decision and it was uh i'd say devastated for him not yeah. for us but for him for himself as a friend as a friend and a and a and a family member he was devastated for us because versa was lemmy's best friend you know Hmm. So he he missed him tremendously, and and me and Phil we 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 loved Bursal, you know, and unfortunately we could not steer him in our direction. Uh, his wife had had to do that job, and she did a a pretty good job of getting him out of the band. So wow, that that must be really challenging. I mean, going through bands when you're working with such a number of people seeing people fall through the cracks. I mean, I'm sure there's been other instances throughout your career. Yeah, it has, you know, and, and people lose interest for many, many, many different reasons. And yeah, I respect them all because, uh, you know, people are just different. And, uh, I mean, I had my days too, when I, when I thought, man, you know, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> mm, really? And, uh, yeah, luckily, that shitty feeling leaves you fairly quick. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to, you just have to, you know, take control over your feelings. And especially when my my boys were young, you know, when they were babies and stuff, they, that was hard. Mm -hmm. That was really tough being on the road all the time because Motorhead was such a band tour. We did, oh man, we did 150, 200 shows a year, five man. continents. We just, we could finish a European tour. And if we were late out of Madrid, we would miss the first show in Philadelphia, you know? And right. then after a two months US tour, if we were late out of San Francisco, we would miss to Tokyo, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, I said, look, we, I wanted to pull the continents apart a little bit more than we did. <laughs> Seriously, man. I mean, how do you stay like mentally sound when you're yeah, traveling that, for so long? That is the hardest part of it. And yeah. then if you have your 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 kids at home, your boys. Mm. There's six years be, between my sons. Max is uh, 24 today, and Marcus is 18. Hey, happy birthday! <laughs> Not today, to him. though. But he just. Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, <laughs> He's 18 uh, now. He's going to be 19 this year. So okay. when they were younger, I wanted to be home more. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it's funny. We, we could get off a, a long part of the European, U.S. and an Asian tour, let's say. And after a week, let me call and go, hey, what's going on? Are we going on tour again? <laughs> he said, no, fuck no. Like, we gotta after be a week. A <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was so restless. Yeah, he wanted to uh be on the road all the time, so. That was sort of his home in a sense. That was his home. Yeah. That yeah. he he was he was a road dog all the way to, out to the pinky finger, I tell you. And uh, <laughs> and so so were we, but Phil has a family and I have a family. So that's where it was a little bit tough at at times, you know. Totally. But, Lemmy uh, was just, you know, but, Lemmy, right? Yeah. He, after he'd been to Rainbow a couple of nights, he was finished with LA. You know, he wanted to get back yeah. on the road. So uh, he said hi to his friends in LA and sat at Rainbow playing his trivia machine and had some <laughs> drinks and saw a couple of chicks. And, and then he go, hey, let's get back on the road, you know. But uh, we, we were a little bit different than, than what he was. But we all worked it out and it worked out great, you know, and I, I brought out the family as much as I could on, on the road. And, 
I believe that's where Marcus, my youngest son, he's a phenomenal musician. He's hmm. a drummer, of course, and uh, but he plays brilliant guitar and bass and keyboard and wow. does a lot of recordings himself. So he got that. That's good. That's in the blood. That's amazing. Um, yeah. You know, speaking yeah. of Lemmy, the Foo Fighters actually just released a song called No Son of Mine, which Dave Grohl has said is actually written for Lemmy and in tribute to him. I was just wondering if you've heard this song and if you had any no, thoughts I, on it. No, I haven't heard it yet. Uh, but Dave is a great fan and a great friend, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he respected Lemmy tremendously, like pretty much all musicians out there do, you know, that yeah. has some meat on their bones, you know, and uh, they should because he was a, a fantastic man. But uh, that's great of, of Dave, you know. Dave, Dave has supported the band all these years, and, and that's fantastic. And yeah. he's such a super guy himself, so he fits right in there, you know. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, he seems like a really stand-up guy. Um, before yes. we wrap up, I have a couple of questions from your fans from all across social media. Um, people were really excited to see that you were coming on. Kevin G wants to know if you have any very fun memories recording Don Dawkins' first solo record. Yeah, we have so many great memories from that tour. Uh yeah, that was a pretty wild tour, actually. Uh, we were all young and crazy, I have to say, but uh, <laughs> but it it was like an all star band, if you will. Yeah, John Norum and Billy White on guitar are as uh, two such outstanding guitar players, and then probably the best bass player I ever ever played with of course but one of the best out there peter baltus you know uh, just an amazing bass player it was such a pleasure to play with him because as i always said uh you could go and grab a sandwich and and he he just he was so solid great singer uh very technical and still so solid Mm. Uh, he was just perfect to play with, you know, and uh, yeah. we were a great team and a great band. And Don is is a dear, dear friend of mine. Still to this day, we talk all the time. And uh, any special moments? Oh, well, I have one, one, one moment that was kind of a little spinal tap, tapish. <laughs> it was um, we did an in store with this band, Trickster. We took them out on the road with us. Okay. And they had a huge hit. So a lot of young kids really loved them, especially young girls. They had a video out where they were driving motocross in the, some someone's backyard, and, and they were really hip. <laughs> right, and, the young uh, hip guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 super hip. And, and we were kind of oldies compared to those guys at that time. And... Uh, we did an in-store, I believe it was in Cleveland or Chicago or something, or Cincinnati, it was Midwest somewhere. And we were sitting in the front, we came with our limo and there was a line stretching around the block. And the first table were at our table in Dokken and then further down the record store was, was Trickster. And, and we go, wow, you know, this is gonna be cooking. And uh, they opened the doors and everybody ran past our <laughs> our table down to Trickster. Oh no! And one girl, one girl stopped by Dawn and said, "Hey, my mom used to like you guys." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know that was the only time we did an install with Trickster. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> it, like let's idiots. cancel the rest of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was not a good deal, but it was great fun, you know. I like how that sticks out as a fun moment, nonetheless. <laughs> yeah no no we that was that was uh, great fun and and the guys were a great band and super nice guys so uh, i i wish them all the success that they had you know yeah exactly candy b wants to have some information about the work that went into triple h's theme song with lemmy and motorhead well we uh we got offered the song 
from Triple because he was very uh, firm on that he liked Motorhead to do that song. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we did get a suggestion of a song, but we had to rewrite it a little bit. It was not really what we liked. Okay. And the questions were, if I remember right here, uh, was that if we're going to do this song, we want to do it the motorway, you know, mm -hmm. our way kind of. And, uh, and Triple liked it even better. So, you know, so it turned out to be a really, really nice thing that we did. It was great for the band, but most of all, we became such good friends with, with Triple and, uh, and the rest of the guys on the tour there. And, uh, it helped us a lot because we, we gained a lot of young people hmm. that, that uh, saw and li started listening to Motorhead, you know, and, and uh, no, it was, it was a win-win situation. And I know that the triple and Lemmy became super, super close friends. Nice. Uh, and, uh, and uh, he liked Lemmy a lot and Lemmy really loved triple H too. So it was a win-win situation and it couldn't have gone better. Very cool. James West wants to know, is there any point that you'll get back together with King Diamond in the future? Uh, I knew that question would come. <laughs> I know. No, but that's that's a normal question. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because he's got Matt Thompson playing, and he played, what, 20 years something. He's got a great drummer yeah. playing for him. And uh, I will give you an example here, for instance. Sure. Uh, Lem Lemmy got offered quite a lot of money at a point to do a tour with Filthy Animal Taylor and Fast Eddie Clark. Hmm. And uh, it was a substantial amount of money, actually a very, very good deal. And Lemmy absolutely turned it down. He wow. said, they, they think I'm fucking crazy. I play with the best band I had ever in my whole career. And why would I go back to these guys? He said, not that he didn't like him because he did. He loved them. You know, I actually told Lemmy to, you should do this tour, you know? Wow. I mean, it's, it's a good deal for you. And, and for me, I'm fine with it. Uh, it doesn't matter for me at all, but, but he said, absolutely no. I, I moved on from those days hmm. and, and to, I tell you what I would like to do one day. I would like to do a reunion tour with, with, with King. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. With the old band, you know, Pete black on guitar. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Timmy Hansen is dead, but you could have Andy, Michael Denner. You could have, uh, uh Hal Patino, Pete black, myself just for a tour and only play the stuff that we did from mm. fatal portrait to uh conspiracy that could have been a really fun and very successful tour yes well maybe there's but potential because, for that in the future well that's totally up to king because he does he does merciful fate so you know what i mean he uh he's got his hand in a few things see, yeah, I don't see why not, you know, if if that's if I'm off with Scorpions, uh then uh I could easily have done that, you know. That would have been so much fun, I think, because of uh we were we were a great guy, bunch of guys, you know, and yeah. I still talk to Andy and Pete and and Hal and, and King as well. Nice. But but these days we're so busy with Scorpions. I haven't talked anything about Scorpions. Yeah, I, and actually, um, Danko Jones, a mutual friend of ours, um, he wanted to say hello, first of all, but he also just wanted to hear you talk about Scorpions, and he says yes. that he loves your work with them. Yes, it's been fantastic five years now, almost five years. Uh, they called me after I came back from uh, uh, Lemmy's funeral, actually mm. and uh and uh they had some problems with james and james uh, played with him for such a long time and and he's such a great drummer you know but yeah they did have problems with him and wanted me to step in as a 
as a, just a, a safety drummer, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the couple of weeks, long story short, but after a couple of weeks of hanging out, traveling with them as a anonymous safety net, <laughs> uh, we did rehearse a couple of times together. And then James played well and he c- finished the tour but they called me after that and said it asked if I could uh, join the band and finish the year 2016 this is nice and and this is the beginning of, of 2016 March or something and uh, I said absolutely um, and from there on we went and uh, once we got going and play and they said look you know James not coming back we we mm. we got to keep you you know if you want to and uh and we knew each other from before of course and uh and of course it's not easy to get a new family member into the band and it's not easy for me either to to join a new family because right. they're such a big experience and uh, they've been around for 56 years it's it's crazy you know mm. what I mean and that must be so, so have, different to join. Yeah, they they do have their routines, and and I have my routines, and it's supposed to click, but it actually did. And hmm. of course, they have to change some stuff, and I have to change myself a little bit. And but it it's it's a pleasure playing with the guys. They're great musicians and great songwriters, and and the show is tremendous. I think so. Yeah, we have so much fun when we're out touring. It's very, people ask me, what's the difference between Motorhead and Scorpions? And of course, musically, but there is not much difference really more because these are guys that have been in the business forever. Yeah. And they have so much routine. So it's pretty much the same as how I felt with Motorhead. We knew what we were doing. And and uh, and the same thing goes with the Scorps, of course, you know, mm-hmm. they, they know more than well what they're doing. So a very professional uh, environment, I could imagine. Absolutely, and and yeah, it's great to to sit and play. The, the, I've, I've been a Scorpion fan myself, of course, since since the seventies, and uh, and w- when I play with them, a lot of people say, "Oh, this this is easy shit for you," and <laughs> are you are you even breaking a sweat? And I say. The show we do is harder than what I did with Motorhead. Hmm. Because wow. with Motorhead, yeah, because with Motorhead, if I was out of breath, I could just scream at Lemmy and say, hey, have a drink, Lem, and I need to <laughs> tune my snare or something. And it was more, uh, we could change the set the way we wanted. With Scorpions, we don't. Every hmm. set is pretty much almost on the minute the same length. Wow, and it's a very, very, very uh, hard set for me at certain parts of it. Like mm. uh, we we open up the set fairly hard, and then we get into this. Uh, we do a seventies medley, and then we do an acoustic medley, and then window change right after that. And I'm actually freezing on stage at that point. Really, but right after that. I think I play 40 minutes, 45 minutes straight without even having a sip of water because we go back to back to back into drum solo, into black blackout, into big city nights. I mean, there's Man. not even room to breathe. So this set is is a very, very hard set for me to play. And it, it uh, demands that I am physically fit for it. So, yeah. And I play really really hard i'm hitting my drums harder and and uh, you know so it's it's a tough set seriously wow what about halloween it, i mean how does that compare well that was just the album i did with these guys you know and yeah. uh, what a great record too uh, they called me in because they had trouble with their drummer and uh, i did not really have time to do that album because I think I had four days to fly to Tenerife. Uh, we were starting in Birmingham or Manchester with Motorhead. And and I talked to Andy and I said, look, I really don't have time to do this. 
because that's another band with a lot of weird shit in the right. music. <laughs> I mean, every verse is different, every chorus is different, and I yeah, I haven't heard anything that they did. But I flew to Tenerife and I did maybe 16, 18 hours on the drum stool working hard. Man. And th- thanks to Charlie, the engineer, which I already knew because he recorded some Motorhead uh, albums with us. Uh, and he's a tremendous engineer. We we went through this and I managed to do it, you know. That's and of course, incredible. It, it was very, very hard to, to do that record because uh, I had I didn't have enough time to to grow a feeling around the songs, if you will. I, I had to ask them all the time what they wanted with with a particular song. I, what direction do you want here? And just the fact that they recorded a lot on the drum machine which I think should be illegal for guitar players and singers to yeah. operate a, a drum machine because I said some of this stuff you need three drummers to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, with extra limbs. <laughs> well, you know, they wanted cymbals on on every, you know, uh, hit and, and double bass drums and 16 notes on the right cymbal and then some weird triplets on my kicks and then a, a different snare and still keep <laughs> a quarter note feel over this and, and a oh. tom roll over this. I go, you need three drummers to do this, you know? Yeah, we're the other guys. <laughs> that is yeah, something. Exactly. I said, if if I do a 16 feel with my right hand on the right doing some bell work, that means my right hand is occupied with that yeah i can't do a drum roll and a cymbal <laughs> hit all at the same time you know so Holy. i had to work with them very hard to get a feeling from what they what they wanted with this song we listened to a song and i said what what where do you want me to go with this is right. it a do you want me to go crazy on this or do you want me to to keep more of it because the guitar riff is really heavy should I just lean on the guitar here or hmm. should I step out from the riff and, you know, what do you want on this? But we managed to get through it. And I think it's a great album. I'm very yeah. proud of that record. Maybe uh, happy that it was just the record. I mean, it sounds like quite a challenge, you know? It was a challenge. And, <laughs> and uh, but it turned out great. So yeah, it was fantastic. And right now we're working on the Scorpion record too, by the way, just so you know. Oh really? And uh, when can people much, expect that? Hopefully to the spring, late spring, I'd say. Nice. Uh, we've been recording this live together, which is mm. fantastic. You know, uh, of course, there's little overdubs being done right as we speak, and and uh, solos and stuff. But overall, the record is recorded live. Wow! Uh, all, all the basics are live, which is great, and. And uh, it's going to be a very wide and, and great record, I think. You know, it has it has songs in all kinds of directions, uh, crazy '70s tunes to classic Scorpion tunes to one or two really nice ballads to some heavier shit. And you know, wow, I, that, I can't wait to hear to this. this Approximately, how many songs out. are recorded? So far, I recorded. 16 or 17 songs and i am going down to germany to cut three or four more songs and man and on the record it'll be about 12 i I would think you know so there is some material there and there's some some bonus stuff as well so uh that's going to be very nice when this shit opens up and we can get back on the road you know Yes. I mean, I can't wait to see some live music again. Um, Mickey, this has been an incredible interview. I just wanted to, usually to end it off, we do a speed round of questions. It takes maybe one minute. Any other decade to be your current age in right now, what would it be? I'm happy where I'm at. You're happy where you're at. Switch. Maybe, I, I, because I start playing early, I... I I started playing drums in the 60s, you know, it's ridiculous when I think about <laughs> it. But 
Okay, I, I, I could maybe have, I would like to have been a little bit older in the earlier 70s. I was, you know, I, I went to, out of school 1979. So I was uh, 15, 16 then. I, I could, I would like to have been a part of maybe the music scene from 73, 74 and up maybe, you know, a little yeah. bit more. That's really That's cool. That's the only thing, but but I'm very happy wh- where I've where I, where I've been because, as I said again, these particular bands has has come in the right order for me, and mm-hmm. uh, I played throughout the '70s as well. But it could have been cool to to be in maybe playing mid mid '70s on the biggest stages. That would have been, yeah. I mean, the Zeppelin sort of days, yeah, I, I can imagine. For myself, that's so far removed from my reality so that, that I would probably put myself in well, the same. Know, great Rush fan, Thin Lizzy, Deep Purple, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, when the, All the World at Stage came out, you know, with Rush and, you know, just playing a little bit more on the biggest scenes in the 70s. That's the only thing. Mm-hmm. Very good. I love that. You can switch ability with any entertainer, drummer, otherwise. Who would you like to switch performance ability with for a day? Oh, that's, oh, gosh, that's so hard. Uh, Maybe Wayne Gretzky for a day. Mm -hmm. Wayne Gretzky, (laughs) the great one. (laughs) One moment. Peter Forsberg or someone. Who? Peter Forsberg. Peter Forsberg. My friend. Yeah. Okay. One moment that you felt starstruck in your life. Oof, there's been many, 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 many hundreds of times, of course, when you meet people that you respect. And uh, it's not an easy answer. Uh, I don't get starstruck. That's kind of a wrong word. But you you respectfully meet people with, uh, and, uh, you know, different people that uh, for instance uh sitting talking to the only swedish astronaut Krista fuglesang you know mm. was um, it's amazing to hear his story he was so long up at the space station you know just yeah just out of the blue some, something like that and i have so many good friends in the within uh within sports that is so fascinating to hear how how hard headed they've been in mm. their sports to to become what they are today or or were you know how yeah. they became a good olympian or or hockey player or or whatever sports they they done swimmer or that's fascinating to me and and people in the in the business industry you know how come mm-hmm. a certain person seemed to make all the right decisions all the time yeah uh, the Elon so, Musk types or the Jeff Bezos types, you know, people. Uh, that's fascinating to me. How mm-hmm. how do how do they think? How can they how can they slow down to make sure that they make right decisions? Hmm. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, and and when you talk to these people, they they still say that they make mistakes, but at least they learn from it, and and that's where. So I get a little starstruck or if you will, respectfully meeting people out there Mm -hmm. with that ability to have such a great control over uh, themselves, basically, you know, and uh, and at the same time, live life and and enjoy the the good life, you know? Mm -hmm. What's the biggest misconception about Sweden? That everyone is... Like people long stocking, I think, or eat, <laughs> eating meatballs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fair enough. And finally, deliver one message to your younger self. Let's say you just walked into the, into the room. Is there anything that you would tell your younger self? Good job, Mickey D. Hmm. Pat on the back. Yes, because uh, I obviously done something right that I... At age I am, I'm not old, but I mean, again, I'm playing with two fantastic, three fantastic guys 
that I'm just looking down on stage, see Rudolf Matthias and, and Klaus run yeah. around like fucking nutheads down there. <laughs> I, I'm a baby, you know. So, but still, that that I made the right choices. And when mm. it comes to drugs, for instance, or sacrificing the right things yeah. for a good reason, you know. And so I tell myself. Great job, Mickey D. Because yeah. the only luck that I see in me having is the health part of it. Mm hmm. 100%. When people tell me, oh man, you've been so lucky. I said, what do you mean lucky? I, I, I created pretty much everything for myself. The luck I had is that I've been blessed or whatever with, with being healthy. Yeah. You know? Something to, to be so been, proud of. Yes, I've been able to play drums. I didn't lose my two arms. I, 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 I've been, uh, you know, been able to play and and do my sports and and play drums and and my health been been fantastic. Knock knock on wood, mm -hmm. since birth. And that's luck. That's not much yeah. you can do about. And the rest, I think, I I I've been a big part of creating my myself I've, I've been opening and closing the doors myself mm -hmm. and, and that's what that's where i want to pat myself on the back and say hey mickey good job you know you yeah. you, you did uh, make the right choices here and and that's what i like to say to a lot of younger kids in general that it takes something to get something you know and uh, yeah it's not it's not something you just get you have to you have to want it and you have to go for it and you have to sacrifice a lot for it, you know, and, and, uh, and today's day and age, I don't say that they don't believe in that, but a lot of people actually don't believe in that. Yeah. They think sadly. They can just slip in on a banana shell and, and, <laughs> and be lucky, you know, and, and here we go. Um, but they have a great advantage today with, YouTube and internet and the way the technique is today. So use the tool right, and you're going to be fantastic. You know, yeah. if you use it the wrong way, it's going to be a disaster. So mm, I couldn't agree more. Mickey, thank you so much for your insight today. This has just been an incredible conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I hope it turns out all right. It did. I'll thank see you. See you in Canada. Absolutely. Stay safe and take care. And say hi to uh, Danko. Ciao from Sweden. See you in Canada. All right. Take care. Peace and love. And there you have it. My exclusive podcast with Mickey D from Motorhead, Scorpions, King Diamond, Halloween. I mean, the list goes on and on. What a prolific and incredibly skilled performer that this dude is. Really a pleasure to speak with him and get into his mind a little bit. And of course, get you guys' questions answered. It's always nice to do that. If you want to be a member of the community, go to Facebook and write The Cassius Morris Show. There you're going to find a page and you're also going to find a group. Now, I recommend that you join both. But if you want to get the opportunity to ask questions to the artist directly, I'm doing it primarily in the Facebook group and definitely looking to have more cool people on there people say oh i don't like facebook let's give you a reason to like facebook i don't particularly love facebook myself but i made a little corner with all the coolest people i know um of course people like yourself who are watching the show and we have a exclusive spotify playlist for the group we have a ton of stuff so come join the group link in the description wherever you're watching or listening and thanks so much until next time this is cassius morris saying rock on mm -hmm.